but that's what I look for in a good team is to have that complimentary aspect to it. And the special teams needed to, you know, make a splash. You know, we keep asking them about the offense and this and that, but you got to look for it from all three phases. And now we saw that. And now we know we have the capability to to be able to go out there and accomplish, you know, win the special teams battle. And as we know from the last time we beat Ohio State, that comes into play. What's your mindset transitioning from North Carolina to Penn State under a guy like Coach Rhodes? Just give me, give me kind of the high level of what brought you here and what you're excited about. Yeah, for sure. Uh, first and foremost, he's a great guy, family guy, and that's really someone I wanted to play for. Just uh, someone that I know when I like, came here that they would just take care of us and look out after us and expect us to uh, perform the best we can on the court and like you said touched on I'm from Pittsburgh so being closer to home and it's only about two and a half maybe 215 if I'm going a little above the speed limit so <laughs> I mean it's it's amazing and this is something about doing it something about playing and like playing at North Carolina was cool but it was just so far away from my home and it's something about doing it for like the like closer community the people that you like grew up with because like so many people from Pittsburgh go to school here and it's just Something about that that makes it so special. With the hiring of uh, Deion Barnes, along with just our cohesiveness as a defensive line, um, that just brought us to a new level. <laughs> Most of y'all don't know I'm a lot. running back growing up, so uh, Adrian Peterson was my, my guy looking up to me, Marshawn Lynch. goodies we got it all make sure you hit the link in the description check it out you guys keep buying the merch it allows us to produce this pod and continuing to bring you guys dope content so go check it out make sure you tag us at state media psu and when you get yours make sure you shout us out we'll give you a shout out online check it out I'm looking forward to the support and we appreciate you guys as always uh so we're not as polished or professional as brenneman is so if you guys want to jump in and, and shout out anything at any point in time like feel free it's okay we're we're a little more laid back here, but um, we really appreciate you guys coming out. Dante, I'll echo Adam's remarks to start. Appreciate the venue. This is set up perfect. Um, and again, we're, we're going to be very laid back, conversational. Got some, got some good guests for you guys. Stay on topic with uh, Coach Rhodes and some things coming down the line. But um, yeah, we're really excited to be back. I know I haven't been back as much as I'd like to be. I think the last time I was up was Delaware B. You know, Delaware, that was a big weekend. Man. Yeah, <laughs> similar, <laughs> outcome, similar outcome as last weekend. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, we, um, we, we're, we're going to hit on UMass. We're going to kind of sit here first, talk a little bit. Again, feel free to blow, blow it out. And then, like I said, we'll get to the guests. But, you know, we, we talked last week about some things that we wanted to see. And, and one of the things was special teams production. And, uh, yes. Shout out to Day Day. We got some of that. Um, you know, we haven't had that all year. It's been a big focal point for us and uh, in the past. And I thought that was that was a great thing, especially considering the way that this team has has developed, um, which which, you know, I think has been interesting, to say the least. Yeah, I'm always looking for this complimentary football. You know, you hear JF Franklin talk about it all the time, and it sounds repetitive, but that's what I look for. And a good team is to have that complimentary aspect to it. And the special teams needed to, you know, make a splash. You know, we keep asking them about the offense and this and that, but you got to look for it from all three phases. And now we saw that. And now we know we have the capability 
to to be able to go out there and accomplish, you know, win the special teams battle. And as we know from the last time we beat Ohio State, that comes into play. It does come into play. So it's a good, good little warm up. As a defensive guy, how much confidence does it give you that the special teams can put points on the board as well as our offense, which has been doing a great job of possessing the football, winning the time of possession battle, and those types of things. But when you get that extra boost from the special teams, I just feel like it's different. It's definitely different. I mean, the two guys that just left the stage, when you get to those points in the game, yeah. and you know those guys can go hunt, pin their ears back, Team, the, off, the opposing offense has to get points up because the special teams did their thing. Offense is doing their thing. You know they're going to – DN's going to pin their ears back. And as a linebacker, either if you're rushing, you can get yourself a sack or you get in the right passing lane, get yourself a pick, and that's, that's where you make your money. Yeah. So two points I brought up last week were uh, leveraging the tight ends. Uh, in the passing game, especially the vertical passing game. Uh, as fans and as media members, we've, uh, we've talked about the quote-unquote lack of explosiveness um, with the offense. And uh, I thought leveraging our tight ends from a matchup standpoint, guys like Theo, guys like Tyler Warren, they are natural mismatches. And when we have the talent that we do outside as well, um, to me, as a quarterback, it's it's almost like your binky. It's a safety blanket having big guys in the middle who can move, win their one-on-ones, um, expose zone coverage, specifically in the middle of the field. Um, and we were able to do that both inside and out. We had, yep. I mean, Tyler did drop the one on the on the kind of screen yeah, and go. That was an explosive. You know, you could borderline blame that on whoever you want. But at the end of the day, you know, we leveraged. I thought we leveraged those guys a little bit more rather than just kicking them the flat route and then highlighting them in the red zone. Um, so, do you have any thoughts on that? With, I mean, I think as we see, the tight ends are become they're going to, going to become a bigger and bigger role every yeah. every Saturday. Quarterback's best friend, you know, is a young guy back there. Obviously, we hear about his poise and he's cool, Joe back there, but. Things are going to get crazy down the stretch of this season, and I think the tight ends will will definitely uh, help that. Well, lot. the other thing is, is you're the guy that's oftentimes matched up against those guys. Yeah. Whether it be zone, even if it's quarters, you right. have kind match. of man principles yeah. and match principles with those guys. What type what type of mismatches do guys like Tyler and Theo present? It's difficult because they're big guys, and we're going to talk about you know the defenses coming down the stretch, those contested catches over the middle where you know another body is coming to hit you. Those guys have the size to be able to do that. And then they have the quickness to just run away from you, even if it's just to the flat. You're the inside backer. you got to run, track them inside out. So they have the quickness to just catch the ball, turn it up, and get five, six yards yeah. if you're not there to make the tackle. And then, uh, and then my guy, A.B., I also said this. If I used to lock A.B. up. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. If, um, <laughs> if, um, I, I said this, if I was Mike Yersich, I would come out and take a shot the first play of the game. And sure enough, they went big, hard play action. And Adam, uh, being the media member, CBS guy he is, I guess he couldn't get his uh, hot spot working. So I couldn't see the coach's view of the play and see if we had a chance to take it. I know Drew kind of, you know, held on to it a little bit, moved around and moved. But um, I thought that was at least progress. And then we pushed the ball down the field a little bit more, whether we hit it or not. It's part of the development. And I've said this about Drew. I'm a big believer in his game, uh, especially from like 25 yards and down, extremely efficient, extremely accurate. Now, when you start having to push the ball down the field in certain situations, it's more so about feel. It's more so about understanding how to throw balls with different tempos and different locations than what you typically do, especially in high school when your guys just beat guys right, and you're throwing right. the wide open guys, like giving them a chance, right? And I think he's developing into that. And again, it's, it's a process. I know us as fans, want to see it happen right now but fireworks yeah they want to see the fireworks but um you know I thought that was a big step forward and I'm looking to see more of that as the as the year progresses specifically with our ability to control the football and win the time of possession battle right and you know we talked about this on the way up here it's what's we know the defensive our defense is uh, you know emphasis or what they bring to the table their identity I think we know what our offense is too we just we just don't want to accept it to an extent. Well, yeah, I mean, but there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I said this, I think there's different definitions of explosiveness, right? But when you look at the fundamentals of football, you don't turn the ball over, 
which we don't do. Amen. You control the ball. You win the time of possession battle, which Amen. we do oftentimes. Um, and then if you can move the ball methodically, that takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of discipline. And our team has been able to do that against anybody we've lined up against. So now, you know, I, I am, we're going to touch a little bit of Ohio State, big level, like high, high level, but uh, we, had, we actually have an interview with Joshua Perry coming up uh, next week who we played against. Uh, he's with NBC, right? Is, it, AB, yep. is he with NBC now on the call? Yes, sir. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Ohio, State Ohio State linebacker. Ohio State linebacker. Um, I've done some work with him in the past. He's, he's really good. So we'll get, we'll get nerdy with that, and that'll be available for audio and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I, I think specifically heading into this week, you know, we, we did what we needed to do. We handled business against UMass. And, uh, and somehow we still dropped. Yeah. <laughs> Put up 63 and you still dropped. Uh, we control that, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got it, it just makes this weekend a lot better, a little more sweet. Yeah, yeah. So um, with, without further ado, uh, kind of bouncing off of uh, – we, we had Coach Rhodes here. Some of you guys may or may not have been here for that. But um, we're, we're going to go uh, – we're going to go with my guy Puff Johnson. Puff. Oh. He's, he's going to come down here um, and jump on the podcast. I know this is a football podcast. We'll accept uh, He says he knows ball, so we're going to get yeah, it's his football primary sport. The What's up, baby? Yes, sir. Um, you can Appreciate jump. Appreciate whatever side you want. Want. How we feeling out there? We good? Eating, drinking? <laughs> Champs is in the spot now, man. Huh? I feel old every time I come back to State College. I love it though. We're good. Out the Rachel, bartending back there. Excuse me. And then we got Puff. Yeah. You see, it's comfy. Got enough. Yeah. yeah. It's a little low. For yeah, us, real low. For us longer than <laughs> Sorry, um, not six five. <laughs> and up. So I actually have a really funny uh, story. So Coach Rhodes, uh, he he mentioned about being a North Northeastern PA guy. I was born up in Northeastern PA. My family's primarily from the coal region, Northeastern PA area. Um, and uh, he was the head basketball coach at Randolph-Macon. Now, I, I grew up in Virginia, so South Central Virginia. His, one of his first jobs was, was at Randolph-Macon College, Division III school right outside of Richmond. And me and my little brothers used to go to his basketball camp every year for weeks. And you guys gotta, you gotta dig into it a little bit with him. He, uh, he would move us up, we'd play, we'd tear it up. I had a little jump shot back in the day, but um, Rosie's known me for a while. I'm really excited for him, man. Uh, and I know you're coming from a program that has a ton of history, a ton of expectations. What's your mindset coming into a place like Penn State? We've elaborated on it. We've had pockets of success, but um, you know, you're, you're a Pittsburgh kid. You, you know, you're a Pennsylvania guy. Uh, what, what's your mindset transitioning from North Carolina to Penn State under a guy like Coach Rhodes? Just give me, give me kind of the high level of what brought you here and what you're excited about. Yeah, for sure. Uh, first and foremost, he's a great guy, family guy, and that's really someone I wanted to play for. Just uh, someone that I know when I like, came here that they would just take care of us and look out after us and expect us to uh, perform the best we can on the court. And like you said, touching on, I'm from Pittsburgh, so being closer to home, and it's only about two and a half, maybe 2.15 if I'm going a little above the speed limit. So, I mean, it's, it's amazing, and it's just something about doing it Something about playing and like playing at North Carolina was cool, but it was just so far away from my home. And it's something about doing it for like the like closer community, the people that you like grew up with, because like so many people from Pittsburgh go to school here. And it's just something about that that makes it so special and like so much more sweet to win. No doubt, no doubt. That's perfect. I want to ask you, how's the transition been? You know, going through the portal. If you can touch on that as from a player's perspective. I know Chop did a little bit. You Coach Rose brought you home, and how's Penn State welcomed you also? Yeah, the portal, uh, yeah, that was wild because I remember literally it was like five minutes. I put my name in. You actually got to like fill out like a form to like go through the portal. And I fill out the form. I contact the NCAA and tell them I'm going to the portal. And literally within five minutes, I put up my Instagram post and boom, there was like eight texts. And, I, and I'm thinking like, dang, like, and I'm getting on the phone with these coaches and they're just talking about like how it's speed dating. So like you get on the phone and you talk for about five minutes and it's like, would you want to play for our program? Would you want to fit in? And then probably like 
twenty percent of the coaches like ever like text back just because there's so many people in the portal and if they don't think like the speed dating is like a good speed date then you're cut off the list. So it's it's a real interesting uh Real interesting process, and um, it's not one that I want to go through again just because I was just too much and too hectic. But uh, it was it was definitely a pretty cool process. And then coming here was just uh, just a great family atmosphere. And I mean, people touched on it because I'm from Pittsburgh, and so like people touched on about how Penn State is such like a family like vibe and family atmosphere. And I didn't really believe it just because like I'm from Pittsburgh, so I'm like ah nah, like I'm not gonna believe it, but. Like coming here, like welcome me with open arms, and it's just amazing, like to see the community. Just everyone like looks after for each other, and it's pretty cool to see. Nice. So one thing um, that I want to touch on because it's interesting. I think you're in a you're in a pretty cool position now. That different circumstances, but Brandon, Adam, and I were able to come here during the during the time at Penn State that was a little rough. And realistically speaking, the expectations of of, of the program in terms of coming out of that time was was low. And, and now you see where the football program is. Um, it, it's a testament to, I think, everybody involved during that process. Um, you have a unique, I think, opportunity to do something similar with the basketball program here um, in terms of bringing a, 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 a discipline and energy, a standard to the program. What's, what's that been like? Has that been something that Coach Rhodes has talked about? Has that been something that you guys, as a locker room, have kind of rallied around? Like, hey, we had, like, Coach Coach Holly had three guys when he took the job here. He, you know, couldn't couldn't even couldn't even <laughs> run a practice. And now you guys are getting together and, and preparing for a season, and it's been all over the place. Um, what what's your mindset with that? Do you see the parallels? Does that mean something to you? Because it should at a place like Penn State. Not for sure. Uh, just trying to give back to the fans and just try to win as many games as possible. And Coach Rose really built a great team out of the transfer portal and. Um, because I committed here and I think I was like the fifth player to co like fifth player on the team once I committed and I had full trust that he would uh, build up a good team and a real competitive team and just uh, yeah like you said just trying to trying to go out there and uh, win each one and uh, the Big Ten is a really good conference and coming from the ACC it's a pretty almost like similar competition a little bit different playing style but uh, yeah, just trying to build a culture and build an atmosphere that's going to stick and like just one that can carry along for a lot of years just because that's where I came from and like the atmosphere and the generational like uh, just success North Carolina had and that's something that I'm trying to instill and just something I'm trying to uh, teach a lot of players just because I've seen like how the top of the top can work. Yeah, so, you've been there. Yeah, so just uh, trying to use what I've learned and just uh, like spread it out throughout the whole program. That's awesome. I love it, man. Now, putting the past behind us, you're here now, you're in it, you're, like you said, getting ready for this Big Ten run to start. What can we expect from Puff Johnson? Like, what's your game? You mentioned play style. What do you bring to the table for Penn State basketball? A uh, player that's going to go out there and give it his all, and when you go back and look at the film, you're going to be like, that was definitely the hardest playing player out there, and someone that's just going to leave it all on the floor, going to do everything to help his team win, and one thing that I've always prided myself on is that wherever I've went, I've prided myself on not losing basketball games and doing whatever I can to help my team win. If that's dive on the floor, if that's take a charge, if that's do whatever, whatever is needed. If it doesn't show up in the box score, whatever is needed just to help our team come out with more points. And that's something that you're going to see here and just something that I carry out through my basketball career. Hell yeah. Sounds like a football guy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right? I, lo I, I love me some football. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I love me some football. Well, now that you're talking about that. Right. Um, Brandon and I talk a lot, uh, some big picture college football, oftentimes to kind of start the show. Um, and, and, and we're going to go on quarterback play here. And, and I, there's some other points we can talk about with you here. I think it'll be interesting hearing your, your takes on this. But I, I want to start with one guy specifically who um, you probably have some connections with down in North Carolina, Drake May. We got to see a couple Heisman contenders go head to head this week with Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. Yeah. And Drake May just kind of quietly been down there doing his thing, just smooth throwing 400 yards, keeping keeping the Tar Heels in it, winning some shootouts. Uh, what's Drake like as a guy? Um, what's his what's his uh, approach to the game? What do you think separates him and gives him his edge mentally? Yeah, Drake. He's an amazing guy. Comes from an amazing family and. That was one of my close friends down in Chapel Hill, and I remember the day I committed to Penn State. He was like, "Good luck, bro. Like I'm gonna be watching. Like 
hope you ball out, like we're we're locked in for life. But I'm thinking in the back of my head, like Drake, like you're getting ready to like you're getting ready to have a breakout season and go to the NFL. Like you don't need to be watching me, you know what I'm saying? You're about to be, you're about, you're about to be you will be training yeah, for the draft. Yeah, yeah you're, 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 you're gonna be a top twenty, top ten pick. Like you don't gotta be watching me, but so it's just that's the type of guy he is though. He's not like self centered. He's all about others, all about his friends and. Like being around him was so cool just because we had uh, Sam Howe the year before Drake came and Sam Howe, he was a real leader. He's a uh, quarterback for the commanders now, but uh, he was a real leader. And then seeing Drake take the reign after that and uh, the culture that Coach Brown built was pretty cool uh, being around them. But seeing like what he did with that program and um, because North Carolina was never, ever even thought of as a football school. Yeah. And now they're undefeated. And it's just cool to see like the type of leader he is leading them each day. So what about his game? If you, so if you're, if you're selling him for his Heisman campaign right now, what about his game do you like? Uh, he's just so, he's so gritty. Like, I remember, uh, I mean, I've been close friends with all the football players down there, and they'd always tell me that the coaches would just tell him, like, you got to slide, you got to slide, because he was taking too many hits early on. But that's just the type of player he is. Like, he's going to sacrifice his body, sacrifice everything. There was one play against App State last year. They were like, it was, it was a really close game, and Drake took off from the five-yard line and tried to hurdle everybody and get to the end zone. But that's the type of guy he is, though. He'll give up his body for the team, and that's one thing I do admire just because uh, that's the type of brother. So his oldest brother played with my brother at North Carolina, so that's the type of guy his older brother was. He was gritty, man. Yeah, yeah Luke May. Yeah, yeah. So it's just the, that's just the type of family they are, and that's why I feel like our family is so close to the May family, and like, we'll talk to them all the time just because, like, we share similar playing styles, even though me and my brother play on the basketball court and he plays on the football field. That's awesome. Uh, enough about the other blue and white. Back to this one. <laughs> what are you liking so far from this squad? Any positions you pay attention to or are you just enjoying it all? Oh, no, nah, I, I watch football. I, I watch all their games. I love football, but I really like how good our defense is because mm -hmm. one thing that people say defense wins championships and boy, Talk about stops. I mean, what? Iowa scored zero points? Yeah. Like, that's, that's yeah. like a power. A, well, Iowa, I, mean, I know, I know, I understand, but that's a power five school. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a, this isn't like you, I know you might score zero points, but this is a power five right, football right, program. But like last week, I think when, you know, they, they show the highlights, they beat Wisconsin, but like the, the, the player stat ticker was their punter for like five Yeah, I saw, I saw that. I did see that. I did see that. I did see that. Yeah. But yeah, our, our, our defense and Things I'm seeing out of our offense is uh, real good, but yeah, I really love the defensive aspect just because it's it's like the thing that gets overlooked so much in football and other sports, and it's just the real grimy and real grimy and gutter play style. So, so you said you were a football guy, so you played, right? Yeah, I played. So, what position you play? Play quarterback, running back, receiver, DB, uh, all the way up to like all the way up to like eighth grade. All right, so you were the Jackie Moon. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would just. I DB just, was last. You talked a lot about defense, but you mentioned DB last. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. when you play, he wants to score the ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you play, you want to, you know, what I'm saying score. But I mean, I wasn't really like the. I wasn't really the. Uh, biggest guy out there, so I was no linebacker or no defensive lineman, so I had to, you know what I'm saying, use my finesse fair. compared fair. to other guys. All right, all right, fair enough. So you're saying you'd be able to go up top and, and help some deep threat? Oh, for sure. Mm. For sure. Fade for ball. Sure. For sure. Fade. O fade. Only, only fade, though. Fade. Oh, and, not going to fade. Nah, I'm not going to slam. No, you're not, not going to Fade, yeah. yeah. All right, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> all right, well, let's open it up, man. What do you guys got for Puff? He's a football guy. He's a basketball guy. What, what do you guys got for Puff? Don't be shy. No preguntas. <laughs> up top, my guy up top. You've had good questions all night. I don't know if you're a journalist major. You no, might, no, might no. have a future. Uh, do you guys think there are any situations in which it, there, it might be worth uh, putting Bo out there for a couple snaps? He showed his running prowess. Do you think there's any, there's any good in uh, putting him out other than garbage time? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There, it, yeah. I guess, I guess I'm the football expert now. Yeah, I mean. That, that'd be that, that'd be real interesting. I mean, I'm not the head coach, nor am I a coach, but that, that'd be a real interesting take. To that's a, that's a good question because you stumped me. Yeah, that's a good question. B, what you got? I'll say, while he is a tremendous athlete, I think with the already young quarterback, I think I want to keep him on the field unless the opportunity presents itself, which I'm sure they may have some packages. But I think let's let's let this kid get all the reps that he can in the meaningful moments for sure. Yeah, I, I think it's a unique situation. I think there may be a time and place for it, but it hasn't quite come up yet. Um, and to B's point, 
when you have a guy, you got to put him in situations and expose him to um, things and force him to do things that he may or may not be comfortable to do. Because you got to find out if he can do it against a game like this weekend, against an Ohio State, against a Michigan, uh, when it's gonna when it's gonna really play a factor in the big picture and the ultimate goal of this team. So um, I like Bo. And I think he's going to continue to get better. And I, again, I think that there may or may not be some times where that where that comes up. But, but I think it'll be situational. Good question. So, Bob, um, you know, you talked about Michigan State and Michigan State. Cool. Um, seeing if you want us to like, if you have a celebration that you want us to like echo or like something to say after you score, stuff like that. We had like pick last year. We had like whoop for picking the stand, so just seeing your take on that. I, that's, that's a good question. This guy's um, running nitty. Yeah, I know, I know. I'd probably say, nah, 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 nah. I'd probably say even as a collective unit, like once we make a three, because we're going to be shooting a lot of threes this year, as a collective unit, yo, boom, like B-O-O-O-O-O-M, but real loud, like every single time, because the bench yells it. So, I mean, if we get the student section to yell it too, that'd be, that'd be real rocking. I like that. So, Puff, you've been in practice all, uh, all uh, preseason so far. Who should we be looking out for as fans, as a guy who could make some noise this season that we might not be expecting? Yeah, um, one guy that uh, you guys saw a lot of him last year, uh, Kanye Clare. You guys saw he's one of the three players that stayed. And, um, yeah, I've been really impressed by him. He's just very fast, very quick, can get to his shots whenever, and that's one guy that – you guys can expect to like really see just take off this year. Um, you saw a glimpse in a uh, little glimpse of him last year, but him being a sophomore and uh, just knowing more about college basketball, I feel like he could really take off this year. Anyone else? Here we go. Um, still out there and battle through it. team. How can you bring that mentality for sure, um, just uh, just not stopping and just a real gritty mindset. That's one thing that I've always tried to have, and that's one thing that I've uh, tried to carry without like whatever I do is just uh, just a tough-minded uh, just thought process on the game. And no matter what happens, mind over matter. And so just keep on going, keep on going until you know what I'm saying until they drag you off the court. So that's why I'm gonna try to just keep on bringing on every place I go. It's that Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. Pitt, blue, call, <laughs> blue Call the City. Pittsburgh. 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 My, Pittsburgh. My jersey. Sixburg. Back to football. You mentioned that UNC, you watched Howell, who's playing for the Sanders, you watched Bay, who's probably going to be a top draft pick. Why is Drew Allen your favorite quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. I say Drew Allen's my favorite quarterback just because, I mean, he goes to the school where I'm going, and we both rep Penn State. So, I mean, uh, we're both going to be Penn State grads. So, I mean, I got to cheer for the. Local guy, and I really like how cool and composed he is. He's a very heady quarterback, especially for how young he is. And so I really, I really like that about him. It hold shows on. a lot of maturity. Hold on, hold on. I asked you to give me the the Drake May Heisman pitch. Now I'm not gonna say. Nah, give Drake's, me Drake's my dog. Hold Drake's on, my I know Drake's, Drake's your dog. dog. I know Drake's your dog. But I'm saying, I'm saying. So Drew, we're not gonna put that type of pressure on him yet. But. Give me, give me a Drew pitch. Come on, man. Dive in there. The Drew give pitch. A, Drew um, pitch. a team, uh, a player that's give a Give me real... a Drew pitch. Let's just say for, let's just say for, uh, for, for Big Ten Newcomer of the Year. Yeah, or something yeah, yeah. Like yeah. That. A, a player that's a leader of, leader of men. And that's uh, one thing that's overlooked in football is mm. because a quarterback is a, he really is the glue guy for the whole team. And, I mean, for quarterback, you can be as good as you want. But if your quarterback's not the leader and not taking control of the locker room, taking control of the huddle, then... I mean, I don't know how far the football team will go, and just being ranked number six, and you got to have a good quarterback. I yeah. mean, if if you're a top if top five team, you got to have a good quarterback. So that's my pitch. No doubt. All right. Leader of men. Leader of men. What are some things that you guys think we have to do this week to be a team like Ohio State? Puff, you fire. Oh, you, right you, first. you want me to start? Yeah, you fire away first. Puff, you're you the, you're the start. Right now. <laughs> So I'd say to start, I'd probably say, I mean, our defense, I feel like our defense is going to do well. Uh, I know Ohio State has some lethal weapons on the outside, but our defense is going to do well. And, I mean, the biggest thing when it comes to any athletics is just compete. And you're going to compete at the highest level. You're going to have the best opportunity to compete with the uh, – it's a primetime game, right? It's not big news. No, no, it's big news. It's big news. Big it's big news. Well, yeah, I mean, I was, gonna say, I was going to say with the lights on, but I guess the lights won't be on. So. <laughs> sun will be out. Well, with, yeah, sun will be out. So. Yeah, so, but, it's Columbus. Yeah, you get the, one of the best opportunities to compete. And 
that's really what it is. And you're competing at the highest level and just go out there and leave it all on the floor is mine. What I got to say. B, what you got? No, you're not putting me. Oh, you're okay. not going last again. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. I, 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 we actually did talk about this. I said this. I think, I think taking a page out of the Notre Dame playbook and trying to make it as hard as possible for a young quarterback at Ohio State, who I, I do have a lot of respect for Kyle McCord. I think, I think he's figuring it out. I think Ryan Day does a good job of putting those guys up, putting those guys in successful positions consistently throughout the games to execute and just do their job. But making it hard and taking away Marvin Harrison Jr., who's a generational talent. He's unbelievably good, and it's really hard to ask anybody, our roster across the country, to match up with that guy one-on-one. -on -one. So giving him help, taking him away. But then it presents the problem of taking advantage of when he does have to get to two and the D-line putting a little bit of pressure on him, moving him off his spot, and making him be able to throw those second and third reads accurately. Get, continue to do what we've been doing, turn the ball over, give our offense some short field, be able to run the football. They've struggled running the football, so go back to the basics of win the time of possession, win the turnover battle, um, and just stay in it and stay focused, because it's gonna come down to probably three or four plays when you're talking about really good teams like this. So um, just having the mental focus and the mental fortitude to stay in it, and when the chance does arise, Lights are on, or well, lights won't be on. But um, you know, as as be, be able to be able to make it, be able to make it, make the play, and, and, and go from there. Yeah, pretty much everything Hack said definitely echo that. But just and like you said, in those three moments, those three plays that are going to come about this Saturday, it's the leadership, as he said, the leader of men, the guys, whether the offense, defense, special teams, whether the play goes in our favor or it doesn't, is to keep the team kind of kind of right here on the task. Because as we know, these games, you know, they're a good team. They're going to make their plays. I'm not expecting a shutout, like a 63-0 against UMass. But it's going to take those moments, that leadership from the coaching as well. But the players on the team really take on this and, you know, keep the ship afloat and keep it moving forward. That's what I'm looking forward to. Good question. Yep. Yeah, we got one more or anything else? One more. Right here. 2013 Michigan whiteout pass. What's something that, that uh, what that you guys experienced in that game that you could look forward to and uh, give advice to the game upcoming this weekend? Yeah. Man, just living the moment. Living the moment. I, we were talking on the way up here, Jason Cabenda, my linebacker mate. I remember going to Nittanyville that week. And early in the week, you know, we were, I, we were a good team. We definitely weren't as outwardly confident as, you know, this team is with how deep and talented they are. Talented. But I remember he stepped on Indianville and said, now nah, we're winning this Saturday. Woo! Newspapers wrote all about it. He stamped it. So I think that confidence definitely kind of thrilled through us. And I'm expecting that same amount of energy this week. Uh, I think that I remember that from that, that year. We, we were ready to ball out, man. No matter who you laid out in front of us, we had, took our lumps that season. And as I said, the leadership and those, those rocky moments. Coach Rose spoke about, you know, professional and career, you know, turmoil, staying afloat and, and making things happen. College football is fun and wacky. I think that's why we all love it. So anything is definitely possible. Yeah, so B, you were highlighting the Ohio State one to the Michigan one. I think it's just oh, shoot. No, you're cool. No, you're cool. You're cool. You're cool. You're cool. Both, both are great. Both are great <laughs> examples here. But uh, to the Michigan one, I think it's just a mental fortitude, like I said. Like, there's going to be three or four plays, like, being able – that was such a long game. It was a five-and-a-half-hour game. Like, just mentally being able to stay into it, I'll never forget. Like, after it all ended, it was like you could actually breathe and you kind of snap out of it. But being able to stay locked in on the small things throughout that entire game and understand that it may teeter, it may go this way, it may go that way, but just executing consistently and being able to go – go the distance and these guys I think these guys have shown the ability to do it so far this year and this is going to be another opportunity for them and I, I fully expect this team to take full advantage of it so all right Puff you my got turn. anything to add my turn? yeah <laughs> for sure I, I, I was, so, so y'all talking about the Michigan game so as soon as you said that the first thing that popped in my mind was the uh one clip that went viral I think I was still in high school or it was one of my first years at North Carolina the, when uh, Michigan had to call timeout on the first play. I think that was, oh, what, yeah. 2000? No, no, that was a different Michigan one. I know, I know, I know, I know that, yeah, I know yeah. that, but I just wanted to touch on that because that was incredible. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, like, as a university, that yeah. was, inc like, it gave me chills. And yeah, I didn't yeah. go to Penn State, I had no relation to Penn State, and it gave me straight chills. Yeah. Well, do, do, do you know what year that was? 2019. Yeah. 2019? 2019. Oh, my gosh, that was electric. That's why I was hoping the uh, whiteout was going to be the, right. like, be the yeah. Because that's just, like, that's just, that's, that's intimidating. I mean, it's that's different. intimidating. Like, it's that's. Different. 
Calling time out in the first place is crazy. Yeah. So that's what I got to add. I mean, I know that's not the same year, your question, but I just had to say that. Because yeah. I, I, never, I, I never had the chance to go on record and say how incredible that was. <laughs> now you did. Appreciate it. Thank I'll you. go back to the Michigan. Sorry, I mis uh, misheard your question. I wasn't necessarily, I was on the field with special teams. I was out there trying to just make a splash. Wasn't wheeling and dealing like my guy Hackenberg, freshman quarterback on the field. But that was just an electric day. Like you said, lasting that whole bout. Because that was, for a guy that was on the special teams, that was a long game. So, and like you said, we have the we have the energy and depth to go to this. Yeah. All right. Appreciate y'all's uh, questions. Puff, appreciate you, bro. Yes, yes sir. sir. Appreciate you guys. Yo, guys, we got the merch. We have hats, shirts, hoodies. We got it all. Make sure you hit the link in the description. Check it out. You guys keep buying the merch. It allows us to produce this pod and continuing to bring you guys dope content. So go check it out. Make sure you tag us at State Media PSU. And when you get yours, make sure you shout us out. We'll give you a shout out online. Check it out. I'm looking forward to the support and we appreciate you guys as always. And we are also gonna kick this off with two more special guests. And that is Zane Durant and Devon Elias on the D-line here. Come on, guys. Billy Bows. We coming through here? Drip it out. Chill. All right, bet. Y'all can sit next to that. All right, bet. What's up, what's up? What's up, baby? Thanks for coming on. Yeah, appreciate it, y'all. Ah. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, OG. Appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys. How y'all doing, how y'all doing? <laughs> chill, chill. Wake me up, turn me up, yeah! <laughs> I love her bringing the energy. What's up? Can we go, I'm gonna kick this thing straight off. I'm gonna hold y'all up. I'm gonna get into the season. Been a lot of noise. D-line this, D-line that. But I know you guys is dogs, killers. Yeah. So I want to start off with love. And what's like the best trait that you guys individually bring to this D-line? Uh, I think it's just the fact that it's just our aggressiveness. Um, and we know exactly who we want to be. You know, we set out at the beginning of the season and said that we were going to be the de best D-line in the country. Uh, and you know, in the last couple of weeks, I feel like we've shown that uh, play in and play out. So um, I think just everybody being on the same page and understanding like this is exactly what we need to do in order to be where we want to be and be who we want to be at the end of the day. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that too. Um, I'll say really our, uh, our love that we show for everybody, like everybody in the room got everybody back outside of football. So that kind of made our bond tighter. So we're on the field. We kind of already know what each other will do. So we just really take that as an advantage when we play. Yeah. So, so I'm not gonna lie, I, I was slightly critical early on. I'll, I'll <laughs> raise my hand. Yeah, I'll raise my hand and say I was slightly critical. But uh, it wasn't anything you guys were or weren't doing. It was just kind of like a bigger picture evaluation that I had. But what you guys have shown me and shut me up is again, I I think you know there's a lot of ways to skin cats, and the way that you guys have taken advantage of playing your position specifically and making an impact in the run game against a very physical team, things of that nature, has been more so on the side of we're going to be more athletic, we're going to be more twitchy, we're going to be stronger at the point of attack, we're going to be able to get penetration and allow our linebackers to kind of play off of us. That's my evaluation. I want you guys to give me what your strengths are when it comes to a downhill, aggressive, bigger offensive line. What's your approach? What do you guys leverage in your game? And ultimately allow not only yourself and the other players around you to make plays, but your back half and so on and so forth. Yeah, I'll say uh, our lessons that we use that a lot um, with Coach Diaz. Um, we usually move it a lot. I'll also say our strength staff has helped us a lot, so you might not look the biggest, but it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right there, so yeah, that, that's what uh, helped us against teams like that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, honestly, like, you know, the critiques were kind of expected. You know, when you lose a talent like P.J. Mustafer in the inside, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to fathom that the D-line can get any better. But, you know, with the hiring of uh, Deion Barnes, along with just our cohesiveness as a defensive line, um, that just brought us to a new level. You know, our technique is significantly better. Uh, that's another big thing in our game and how we're playing right now is just we're very technically sound um, on the inside and the outside. Um, and, you know, you guys see the results. So. Awesome. <laughs> we definitely see the results. I want to get to those guys you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. My guy, 
Barn, Dion, that's how we play with. That's my OG. Yeah. I'm a young boy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to get to low school. We'll start with uh, Coach Dion. I mean, I used to smoke on it, but for me, that's such like a beautiful sight. To see my yeah. dog now, the head D line guy, yeah. give me all that game. What's something that maybe the fans won't ever know or see that, that he brings to the table and gives you guys? Um, I would most like, I would probably say his experience, you know. Um, his journey here and then his journey in the NFL, uh, you know, it wasn't always sunshine and rainbow. So he knows what it's like, uh, you know, to succeed at a high level um, and then to, you know, uh, fall short at times. And I think that's valuable just because, you know, we're all in it. We all have similar goals. We're all in it to, you know, play at that next level um, and be the best player, be the best players in the nation. So I think his insight as a player and then now transitioning to being the head defensive line coach, I think it's, I think it's uh, one of those things that not everybody can say that they have, so. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Coach Dion just, just his uh, relentless, like, coaching. He stays with Sibley late nights, uh, early mornings to help you whatever, watch extra film. Um, he's willing to break down your film, what you need to do to get better, uh, and then just break down other team opponents for him. Yeah, and he's very, uh, very honest. Um, yeah, going over film with him isn't the most fun in the world just because it's like, even if you feel like you had a good game, it's, yeah, nah, you didn't have a good game. Yeah, yeah, you didn't have a good game. You did, you missed this, 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 and this. And it's just, of course, it's all for, you know, the benefit of us and to, you know, take that next step as a group. But it's, it's definitely disheartening at times, even though, you know, it's just tough coaching. You know? Yeah, so I, I'll say this. And I, you know, you guys may be privy to this or not, but Dion's first defensive line coach here was Larry Johnson. Larry yes, Johnson sir. sitting over across the sideline next week. Um, for him, I, I want you guys to kind of speak on this, whether or not he's spoken on it in the room or not. But I want you to speak on it. What it would mean for him to go out and get this win against his former uh, teacher, yeah. idol, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, kind of speak on what you might think that Dion has learned from Coach Johnson. Because obviously Coach Johnson's placed a lot of great defensive linemen at Ohio State and at Penn State, um, with Dion being one of them. What do you think he's learned and transitioned in, in, from, from just your study of, of what's come out of Ohio State? Yeah, I'd say um, it would mean the world to Dion if you beat Ohio State. For him being his coach on the other side of the field, he, uh, he always wants to show his coach that like, he, he's better. Has he said anything about that? Yeah, yeah, he has. He talked about it a little bit. I yeah. know was, that was his coach until he told me. Yeah. yeah. I figured that out this year. And, um, yeah, I, th I think it would be the word of him if we beat him. Uh, you know, Larry Johnson will definitely go down as one of the most legendary defensive line coaches in, no in, in history. So, you know, to have Dion make that transition from learning from the best to uh, coaching at that level to try to coach the best, um, I, I I think for him, this is definitely like a surreal moment. Um, and I think he definitely took a lot of just like his mentalities from um, Coach Johnson um, and the way he just approaches things just as a coach. Cause when I was in high school, I was being recruited by Coach Johnson and he was very detail oriented, uh, which is much like Coach Dion, you know, very detail oriented. Um, pays attention to a lot of different things, teaches us like why we, why we do certain things. Um, and of course he's a young coach still trying to figure it out, but I think he's well on his way to, you know, becoming one of those names in the future. Most definitely, most definitely. Now transitioning to Coach Losey, you know, I said it from the jump, you know, like I said, a lot of hoopla, a lot of stash, stash. The stash. <laughs> but I was at that uh, WB game. I saw y'all walk out. I'm like, yo, these dudes is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot. I want to say a little bit. Speak on with the training staff because a lot of people don't know that's who the players spend the majority of their college life with. It's the strength staff. Yeah. Uh, Low C, Alvin, and those guys. How did your body change in high school? Oh my goodness. I've gotten bigger, stronger, faster, you know, everything in between. Um, I, I think they've been in the game for so long. They've got a lot of things figured out. Um, and it shows, you know, coming in, I was, I was definitely like a sloppy 315, but now I hold 310 like it's nothing. 
And so I think that's, that's, that's just the difference and I'm moving better, I'm feeling better. Uh, so, you know, it's all credit to them. Um, and they've just been doing a tremendous job, even though those workouts are <laughs> <laughs> bad news bears. <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, the strength class, oh my God, man. Coach Lowe's <laughs> Low seeing them, but I hang with them a lot. Uh, we break down my body fat and all that stuff a lot of times, so I hang with them the majority of the time. Uh, the workouts get crucial. They do get crucial. But uh, they, they, they always best with us, so they got us big and uh, ready for this year. What's the worst, worst workout? Win a workout. Oh, Easy. by far. By Easy. far, win a workout. Are y'all back, back in the mornings? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, At like good. four. Like oh, 4.30 a.m. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many laps do you do to start? Oh, we don't do laps no more, big homie. Yeah, yeah bro, you know they kick ass. You know they kick ass. No, 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 no laps. James Springer came in, made a statement as a new head coach. Two laps. Five yeah. o'clock in the morning. No from stretch. From Oldfield, no stretch. Before the winter workout. Back's tight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your back locks up the whole workout. And then hey. Lucy's got you out there with the mad thrills. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, that's... Your back's just locked in. Even with that, we got we got water bags, and the water bags get your back oh, tight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. I love it. Shoot, man, back to this week, you know, Chops spoke on it, Deesha spoke on it. Big game, one and all every week, we know the mantra, but what have you seen from Ohio State that, you know, I won't say, I want you to put a little more material there, but what are you seeing from Ohio State, what do you appreciate, what do you think they do better, and things like that from their offense? Um, I, I, I think in terms of who would help us, um, I feel like their O-line would definitely help us um, just with their play style and the way we play and the way Coach Manny calls our defense. Um, I feel like they're definitely going to help us, you know, with a quarterback in there that isn't super experienced. I feel like that's going to benefit us as well. Um, just going into that game, it's really just going to be a, a – Who's going to give up first? You know, O State is, has always been one of those teams where um, they, they fight to the tooth and nail to the last of it. Um, but the thing is, we'll fight longer. And that's, and that's the base of it. Um, you know, we all, we, we all know that it's going to be a four quarter game. Um, of course, you're hoping not to be, but we all know it's going to be a fourth quarter game. They're a great team. Um, so I think it's just going to come down to execution and who's going to make the least mistakes yeah. at the end of the day, so. Yeah, I agree with that. I think um, it's going to come down to us, really. Um, if we do what we got to do, I don't think nobody going to stop us in the country. I think we're the best in the world, so. Real talk. We just got to handle our business Real talk. and execute uh, and be fast and physical. I think we'll win. Real talk. Amen to that. Real talk. That with that, I want to open it up to any questions for these two gentlemen. Turn me up. Give me something tough. Of course, give me, right give me a good question. Fire away. Tough as mommy's it? Yeah. West Virginia. Yeah. West Virginia. Anyone specific? Huh? Anyone uh, specific? Any uh, individual players? I don't, specific? Know, I don't know their name. Not at all. You don't know their name? They just, they just numbers on the jersey at, out there. That's how we think of it. They just numbers <laughs> on the jersey, honestly. Um, yeah, what? nah. I, I mean, I commend a lot of offensive linemen, you know, like. They, they got a lot to account for up front and then just defensively, you know, with our prowler package as well as just like the rest of our defense. You know, we got hitters at every position, yeah. so. I like a good question. Yeah. Any more questions? I'm gonna go up top first. Up top. Uh, uh, Vaughn, when you carried up the flag last year against Maryland and you delivered it to your dad, that moment was really awesome for everyone in the crowd. Uh, what, was that set up by Franklin? Who invited you? It was really awesome. I was wondering if you were going to do it again this year. Was that Franklin, or was that someone else who invited you to do that? Uh, I, I think there's a couple of guys, because you know we have a lot of people on the, on the team, or a good amount of people on the team whose family has served in the military. Um, so I think they just kind of thought of me at first. You know, my dad served 25 years in the military. Um, and then with me being an older guy, I've been around a, a good amount of time. I remember my freshman year, uh, Cam Brown, he did it for his father. Um, and then just getting that opportunity from the staff, I don't know exactly who it was, but just getting that opportunity from the staff was just a surreal feeling. You know, everybody plays this game for X amount of time. You never know when your name is going to be called, but to have that opportunity to honor your parents, uh, especially after all that they've given up for you, uh, not many people get to do that on field in front of, you know, 100,000 people. 
And so that was, that was a, a surreal moment for me. It was very special and I'm glad, I'm glad I was blessed enough to do it. Good question right here. I was wondering who you guys like grow up watching, model your game after, uh, kind of like that stuff. Ooh, so, uh, <laughs> most of y'all don't know, I'm a lot. running back growing up, so uh, Adrian Peterson was my, my god like up to me, Marshawn Lynch, yeah. but now I look up to players like Grady Jarrett and Aaron Donald. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I was younger, oh, my favorite player by far was definitely J.J. Uh, Watt. He had, the, he had this two seasons, and I think it was like 2009 and 2011 or so. He, he had 20 and a half sacks, and I was like, wow, this guy, is, he's for real. He's moving inside and outside. His aggressiveness off the ball. That was, he was definitely my favorite player by far. Nowadays, I watch guys like Grady Jarrett, Vita Vea, Aaron Donald, of course, guys like that who impact the game um, in the backfield. You know what I mean? Yeah, AD's for real, bro. You know, so anything, any little thing that you could take from greats like that is, uh, is invaluable if you can add it to your game and, um, you know, show it on film. Love it. I'm, I'm going to take this last question before we wrap it up for the pocket. Give us your top memories, your top memory at Penn State so far. Top memory. I got one more after this, too. Top memory. Top, top memory. memory. Yeah. On the field? It doesn't matter. Mm. Or, or if that's, if that's going to be tough, I'll piggyback off it. That question Brandon asked Grant Haley that I thought was fantastic. What does it mean to you to be a Penn State football player? Like, explain, explain to these people what it means, passed down from the old heads, whatever. Like, what, what, what if, if someone asked you what it meant to be a Penn State football player, what would be your definition? Um, it's unlike anything else, to be honest with you, you know, with guys like you guys, legends who come through here, made a name for yourselves, you know, and done things that a lot of people in college can't say they've done, you know, winning the Big Ten championship, uh, doing stuff like that. That's, uh, that, that, that's special and, you know, only a small amount of people can do that. And just being able to put on those shoes, you know, Hopefully we can fill them. Hopefully we can, you know, be 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 the guys that you guys were, and then excel even more. You know, you guys laid the blueprint down, and Coach Franklin is just coaching us up to be the best team that you know he's ever coached. And so that just to be able to carry on your legacy, your legacy that you guys left is uh, is just special in and of itself. Yeah, I'll say as a uh, defensive player coming in. One thing that they taught us about everybody on the defensive side was playing fast, physical. You got to be tough to play at Penn State. So I take those two things serious. Uh, we don't want to feel playing fast and physical. And then toughness, is obviously, you won't be able to feel if you're not tough enough at Penn State. Yeah. Love it. Oh, and I think I got an answer for the one, though. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. yeah, I'm going to be honest. My, my favorite memory um, was my freshman year, 2019. That's when we played uh, Michigan. And oh my goodness, I looked out and I couldn't hear myself think. Oh, that's the same. Okay. Yeah, 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 like I, I couldn't. I, I'm looking, and I'm a freshman. I just got there. You know, I've been to an O State game. Uh, I went. I went to the O State game when they blocked the field goal. Okay, yeah. And, 2016. And I don't know. It wasn't as loud as it was at that point. I know it sounds Woo! crazy, but it was. It was. It was ridiculous. So that's probably one of my favorite memories. Word. All right, folks. Well, we appreciate you guys giving us this opportunity. This was yeah. the pocket. Yes, Good luck to these guys. Appreciate y'all. I love this challenge. I'm looking forward to it.